And with any luck. There we go. There we are. And I believe we are live. Wow. Hot it's Saturday dog. already? I know, wow. right? I K R. Wow. It's time for the number one show on the Unexpectables on, on Saturday nights in YouTube. <laughs> that, that is correct. Time? It's time. <laughs> it's time for Gateway. <laughs> It's time for Gateway! We did it. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go! Guess who's back? Back, back again, kid. <laughs> Gateway's back. Tell your friends. Or five. Watch my show. Watch my show. Watch my show. Watch my show. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be at four hours of this. <laughs> usually it is. Yeah, usually. Indeed. Uh, yes, welcome back to Gateway. Uh, excited to be back and playing this funny Fallout game. Uh, should mention, before we get into tonight's escapades, that next week... Uh, there will be no gateway because Rabbit is going off to help a friend uh, yep. move. Yay. Um, I'm, so I'm, do I'm doing that thing that Sesame Street taught me to do. Mm. Friends and whatnot. Counts, I'm cur oh. currently yeah, debating I, doing another one shot or perhaps maybe a gateway Q&A. Uh, either or. Uh, but yes, uh, so so next week will not be Gateway, but the week after should be Gateway. I guess. So be ready. Be there or be square. Um, but uh, with that, let's go around the horn and introduce ourselves. Hey, Caitlin, where can they find you and what are you up to? Hi. Hey, hello. My name is Caitlin Elizabeth. You can find me all over the internet at boobsmcbalrog. Here on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash boobsmcbalrog with zeros instead of O's. Don't know when I'm going to stream on there. Hopefully soon. Um, but other than here on Gateway, I'm over at twitch.tv slash landingpator on Mondays for a row Hi. with me. Ties the bind. Either name works for the show. What? what yeah, one is the name of the campaign the other one's the name of what i called it when i decided to make it getcha mm. yeah 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 that's it for me speaking of lanny where can they find you and what are you up to me well you can find me all over the internet at lanny pator um currently over here playing some street fighter i i wasn't on yesterday or today i was a little too busy today and yesterday uh i was Streaming some Street Fighter with everybody over on Stream 4 Star. But I will be playing some more of that world tour mode tomorrow. Sarah, everywhere I go, I hear you I hear you trying to start beef with me, and it, it, it hurts my feelings. I only was one person trying to start beef. You you are you are a lot of one people though. Like oh. here's is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere I go, it's like, what's I, I just hear Sarah tell me, what's your problem? <laughs> like like you're just kind of around the corner. It's like, give me your money, nerd. <laughs> oh God, is that little girl I voiced doing that too? I remember a child. Is there a little girl running around being like, "Stop! You came to the wrong neighborhood, bitch." I'm gonna uppercut you so bad. But no, it's it's been a delight. Honestly, that game is charming as hell. I've been absolutely loving the story mode. So feel free to drop by and enjoy. Uh, my adventures through with my boy Gulak Crunch, another one of my little monster factory creations. Uh, other than that, Monday, Ties That Bind. Uh, festival went off with only a, one group of children getting injured. So you know what? We call Hooray! that a success in D yeah, we call that a success in D&D &D terms. Now it's time to uh, wrap up the festival and see what is going to happen with all of these negotiations that have been happening throughout. Uh, you can cut the tension with a knife between the North and South Kingdoms and throw a dragon into the mix and there's a whole lot of other things going on, so tune in Monday and see what the Connolly family gets up to over there. That's me, though. Right on. Up next, we got Rabbit. Where can they find you? What are you up to? Hey, what's going on? My name is Rabbit. I'm a comedian. I'm also a writer. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and my VODs on YouTube at HeyMrRabbit. I stream throughout the week. 
and I stream horror games and RPGs and uh wait, horror games? Yes. Retro mm. games. I stream retro games as well. Uh I played the new System Shock uh on Thursday. That was very, very it's fun. It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Oh we dude, it's so red. It yeah, we shenaniganed hard. I I basically just became Bender. I like Robin. I like stealing stuff. I was just stripping the walls of the entire. I accidentally destroyed Earth district. by pressing a button like Dee Dee in Dexter's lab, so that was fun. <laughs> no, yeah, whoops! We'll see the planet. <laughs> Showdown was very thankful. I'm like, you know what? I'm glad somebody appreciates my efforts. Thank you, thank you, Showdown. It, man, I was so I was so happy to show uh, Groove and Sarah how creepy Shodan is because she's like one of my favorite like horror game personalities. Oh, she's and great. so we're talking, I, joking I about study that performance. We're talking, joking about everything. Then she talks, and all of us are like, "Ooh!" And then we just slowly ramp up again until she talks again. Like it's like, "Don't wake Shodan." It, it was very fun, uh, but um, yeah, uh, like Connor said, I ain't gonna be here. Uh, uh, next Saturday, I'm going to help my friend move. Uh, but um, that being said, uh, what else am I doing? Oh, yes. I uh, keep trying to do my demo reel. And um, every time I do my demo reel, I'm like, it's it's not right. It's not right. Uh, <laughs> and, I have this thing, and I have this thing where I'm just like, I feel like the tortured artist, you know, like the wooden painting in like one of those modeling movies is like, it's wrong. It's all wrong. <laughs> we'll use the spruce moose. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm up to. I'm still uh, uh, putting a bunch of bodies. So maybe something nice will happen to those. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's uh, that's pretty much what I'm up to. Just uh, trying to get into voice acting and uh, bring in the funnies on twitch.tv slash Rabbit. Right on. Up next, we got Sarah. Where can they find you? And what are you up to? I'm on Twitter and YouTube at Sarah with an H and with an E. Willia. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as uh, Lonnie said, um, Michelle, uh, if you play in World Tour and Street Fighter 6, I'm around there apparently harassing you at every fucking corner. You have so many boxes on your head, Sarah. It's crazy. I mean, I, I, spe I specifically look for Lonnie. I have, like, a sign being, like, Lonnie here. <laughs> like, I at the airport. I you. What are you doing, nerd? <laughs> like, at the airport, I just have signs that be, like, looking for Lonnie. Oh, yeah, I'll take you on in the meantime. Oh, 1v1 me. <laughs> Come on. 1v1 me in Minecraft, Courtney nerd. <laughs> <In> Minecraft. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, yes, uh, next week, Rabbit will be taking breaks for helping movies, so we won't be doing much. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to rest this week anyway, because next week after is potential jury duty. <laughs> hey. Hey. I don't want it. But ask me. Right on. Uh, there's also me. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Just got done playing some Yakuza Like a Dragon, and my goodness, there's a lot of shit to do in that game. <laughs> like, I spent... Uh, yeah. I spent most of, of the game just doing some side content. And, ugh. Wow. Dude, I boot, I, I boot, I there's so much. Yak I booted up that yeah, because a game that came out earlier that I guess was like a report of like one of the other ones, the the one where you're like actually back in feudal times. And oh, yeah. And I'm playing through that. I'm like, there's like a bajillion side quests. It's like, hey, do you want to learn shogi? Do you want to race chickens? Do you want? I'm like, no. <laughs> like I I kind of gave up on the movie due to overload of things. Fair enough. Yeah, the uh, Yakuza series has a, a boatload of side content. All of them do. It's it's nutty. Um, yeah. Um, but yes. Uh, doing uh, Like a Dragon shortly before doing this. Also, uh, playing through the Deus Ex series. And tomorrow will be... Uh, playing some more Invisible War. Uh -huh. Oh, the Invisible One. That's right. Uh, I think that's 
everything I've got for me. Uh, this episode of Gateway was brought to you in part by Die Hard Ice. Die Hard Dice! That's right. Woo! Die Hard Dice is your one-stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. Be sure to pick up some Lies Aspect Dice while you're at it, the official uh, Unexpectables Dice. As well, check out our merch store. Pick yourself up some shirts, some cups, some mugs, some stickers, whatever you want. We got uh, three designs right now, and we're going to have a few more fairly soon here. Bombs? Oh, lantern oil? <laughs> you want it? It's yours, my friend. As long as you have enough rubies. And click the link in the chat or the description of this video if you're watching on the YouTube. That's the most important part, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't really can't really get there if you don't do that. But exactly, exactly. Engagement. We also couldn't uh, bring you shows like this without viewers like you donating their business uh, viewers <laughs> such as pseudonymic fake name. Thank you for the 36 months. Does Lainey get an early level up for surviving the flatline? Tempting. That's right. I that's right. I did that hot sauce stuff. Check out that hot sauce video. I suffered yeah. for your amusement. I watched it. It looked interesting. You were probably just he says. kissing mm, sweat wasn't... down your head. I would very I, like, much There 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 was a lot there was perspiration. I would very so much like to visit things. that store yeah. one day. I am a fan of spicy foods myself. I well, remember if one find, time. If you ever find yourself in Dallas. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I ate so much wasabi, I had a spiritual nirvana. <laughs> I think that means what you probably just point? passed out. <laughs> no, like, I felt like fry after you had a hundred cups of coffee. Like, I was just like, everything's so chill. <laughs> Then again, one of my friends did did tell me my pupils looked really fucked up, but <laughs> <laughs> always a good sign. Pupils like, turned like green bodily. with wasabi. Zemo, thank you for the twenty three months. Impact Frame, thank you for the one hundred bits. Gauze twenty one, thank you for the five bits. Remember, you can adopt a possum at any time. No one can stop you. It's true. I'm not sure anyone would try. Uh, Glork Schnack, Eater of Children, thank you for the 210 bits. Got my Lies Aspect Dice uh, alphanumeric polyhedron set from the Die Hard Dice, and now they are one of my favorite things to eat besides children. <laughs> it's the anti Gamera. Mmm. Delicious dice. They both make a satisfying crunch. Uh, Blue Kios 445, thank you for the 39 months. Uh, Dragasoon, thank you for the 105 bits. Let's hit those high rad counts. Oh, grab back one sec. Mm hmm. Ooh, get the high score for rad counts. And yes. Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 31 months. We <laughs> see. <laughs> I did it. I sneezed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. This is a weird tangent. Well, this is common with me and him. I don't know. If <laughs> you want it to get weirder? Well, instead of a weird tangent, how about a weird segue into getting yeah. into tonight's episode of Gateway? I'm going to ask if she was offering. Let's go. Let's go into the gateway, baby! Let's do it. Let's make it happen! I should probably boot up my voice mod for this. Oh, that would be, uh, that would be absolutely, uh, checking my notes here. Poggers. Hot diggity! Bye, oh, sorry, I have to go to old-timey terms. The bee's knees? Ah! Ah. Uh. <laughs> right there, that's the bee's knees. We got ourselves into here. A real hot oh, digger. Oh. All right. Let's get started. Let's just let's go. Let's just go. When last 
we left the Runaways, Apex the Wild Man, Alvin the Mechanic, Louise the Scavenger, and Cynthia the Nurse, they made a return trip to the arena in order to both check in on Big O, who seemed to just barely be keeping a lid on the men still when willing to call them the boss, and also investigate the area where the hulking psychic monstrosity breached its containment. They found an old locker room which had been converted into a miniature laboratory, inside of which was a strange pod that looked as if it could hold a large person, and there was a small amount of radioactive residue left inside. Apex ripped out some of the cage-like wiring with a deft and precise hand, preserving the structural integrity for closer inspection at a later time. Johan, agitated by the place, was relieved when the party finished their investigation and finally embarked on the journey to find Kirk. What lies ahead of them? Find out on tonight's episode of Gateway. And so... Leaving the arena behind you. Where? There we go. Leaving the arena behind you. You set off southward towards St. Luke's Hospital and towards your eventual goal of finding Kirk and Pepper. So the first stop along the way will probably be that diner we found the first time we traveled down this road. <clears throat> Seems to be a commonly visited area. Maybe we can pick up a rumor about Kirk if he's still around here. Be nice uh, to say hi good. again. Uh, that's Sorry, probably a good idea. Be nice to say hi again. It's been ages. And probably the best shot we're gonna have at finding out any information. And if they remember us, then they would appreciate the fact that Alvin gave them cold cola. Oh, yeah. Miss Brenda was very, very excited to hear about that one. They're probably going to be singing your praises for years to come. <laughs> oh, sh oh, shucks. Come on. <laughs> mm, nudges him. Take the compliment. Thank you for the compliments, Cynthia. Of course. And so we travel south. <laughs> and so south you do. Forward. You have to make a slight detour because treading water without a boat is a little hazardous. But you manage to get onto the road. <gasps> We're in the void. Uh, not for long. <gasps> yes. Or not. More map. More map. More map. Ooh, we're taking a new oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. It's real. Look at that oh, square. It's Oh, oh, this oh, is happening. One. It's Caitlin, real. This is happening. This is it's happening. real. You guys look. Did I want see? to know everything around us. I'm going to roll a wits to understand my area. <laughs> I'm just holding it. Look for potential. Also to look. Also yeah, to thank look you. For, uh, potentially food sources. I'm, I'm I'm uh, right here. Yeah, go ahead. Six. I'm too focused on the fact that we're seeing new stuff. Yeah, you're you're looking around, and there doesn't actually seem to be a lot uh, of um, buildings or or sources of note where you could even scavenge. It just appears to be a road that reads across the river. Robert. How is wow. Johan doing? Now that I should do what we do with Dave and put him into existence. Uh, Johan, uh, <laughs> freshly birthed into reality. Um, <laughs> It seems to be taking in a breath of fresh air as he appears to be relieved to be out of that space. Sorry about that, Johan. No, that wasn't much fun for you. Mm. It is okay. I don't think we'll have much need to do small spaces, or at the very least, you, you don't have to go inside as much. Yes, thank you for your patience. Mm, patience. I suppose I do have that. 
It's a hard trait to get. It's very boring to learn. Hmm, I disagree. Oh yeah, I have to disagree too. Once I found Boss Man's books, I was like a little sponge. Spongy, spongy, sponge. I mm. meant the skill itself was boring to learn. A lot of waiting. Oh, oh well. Eh. Eh. Yeah, I can agree with that a little bit. Mm. But when something it happens, is, oh man, the payout's working. It is more than waiting if you know how to bide your time. How do you bide your time? Mm. Yeah. I ponder and I dream. I do it by studying everything around me, mm. looking at its weaknesses in case it attacks. This is also good. Back when I had to watch out areas, I liked watching the clouds personally. Mm. Just clouds. watching day, just, mm -hmm. just watching day, just crest over the night and whatnot. Apex looks up. What kind of weather do we have today? That's a good question. Let me see. Do... Hello, mutant horse. <laughs> I knew you'd be back. Rad horse, rad horse. I need a cover of that. Red he roams hole. around the wasteland. <laughs> he roams around the wasteland. Uh, uh, <laughs> nope. It can't, nope, I can't, I can't go one right now. Uh, weather right now okay. is uh, fairly clear skies and pretty sunny. It's a nice day. Kind of shade my eyes as I look up. Not many clouds to look at today. Well, means no questionable rain, so I'm down with it. I like the rain. Isn't it dangerous for y'all to be in the rain? Uh, all the type of rain that makes my little fun pit boy go off and make noise, but otherwise normal rain's okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there's nothing quite like it. It's soothing. I like the patter on my mask. <laughs> I suppose a mask is sort of like a face roof. Yes. I mean, I don't much like what it does in my hair after it starts to dry. It sort of gestures to her unkempt hair. It's like, <laughs> imagine this with imagine this with humidity attached. Oh, I. Uh... I don't know if I can, actually. She kind of tilts her head like, oh boy. Just the weeds is a dangle on him. I never, I never questioned, like, is your hair plastic or is it just like there? Uh, synthetic? synthetic fiber. I think, uh... Probably isn't plastic. I just wonder. Though. It's probably plastic. It's it's. I mean, plastic kind of like, like synthetic material. wigs, like a nice one, but not real. That'd be different. <laughs> yeah, your hair is definitely not real. No, well, my hair never poofed out or anything like that. My hair always just sticks to my face and whatnot. I can just go ahead and just move it out the way. Apex brushes through the cowl of hair that he had attached to his mask. This is mine. It is wiry and coarse. Well, except for the chunk you'd cut off and gave to Point Man that one time. Mm. Oh, wait, that's still attached to, to the mask, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the cowl. I did give him the cowl, though, so. Hmm. 
Louise has to stretch up on her tippy toes and give Alvin a little ruffle of his hair. It's like, I like you, Poofy, though. It's nice. Oh, yeah. You should be a lot, a lot longer, a lot more wild, like a, like the, like a mane or something like that. Holy shit. Seriously? She's just, oh, she's yeah. just like eyeing you like, I need to see this. What is it like having hair? Mm. Oh. It's a lot easier to tell which way the wind is blowing. Man, some hmm. people like decorating up in different styles, too. I guess nice. on a miserable day, it's nice to have so my head doesn't sunburn, but, you know, as I've said, poofs out sometimes, and that ain't fun. It gets scratchy, and little things like to hide in it, like bugs. Mm. But sometimes you find them, and the good ones can be turned into snacks. They don't all taste good, though. I suppose it has its benefits and drawbacks. Mm -hmm. After a tough fight, it's a real pain to clean, too. All kinds of dirt and what have you in there. And it is something for your opponent to grab on to if they don't fight with honor. Mm. I mean, if you want the experience, it shouldn't be too hard to get a wig or something. And I assume they, I assume bugs hide in fake hair just as much as they do regular hair. And just because you don't have hair don't mean you can't go ahead and just put something up on there anyway. Uh, there's bandanas, uh, there's hats, helmets, all kinds of stuff. You might have to make some alterations for your size, of course, but... Probably a bandana would be the easiest thing with you. I suppose I should be thankful that I am without them. Absolutely. It's just a preference. What is honor? Some people have a code, like a set of rules inside of them. They label this as honor. I've never really used too much of it outside of moral quandaries. But for some people, it gives them rules for how they engage. Like they won't attack certain vulnerable points on an opponent. Mm. Points that some might leave unguarded. I think it's foolish. Those points are unguarded. They are weak and vulnerable, but I was told I fight without honor. So. <laughs> who said that? Yeah, who said that one? Tore the hand off a man who shot me. Seems fair to me. <laughs> That's what I believed. But he no. took exception to him and his companions. They tried to rob me. And I didn't let them. I killed his companions and mutilated him. Damn. <clears throat> wouldn't want to wouldn't have, wouldn't have run up on you I'll tell you that another uh, example you know how would be like uh, fighting one on one and having no interference stuff like that I guess mm. it depends on how you wield it I mean honor's nice and all but if I had to protect any of these guys here or you and I had to do it unhonorably, I'd do it without a problem. Wouldn't even blink. It so seems like it... Break in combat? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean... You've seen Chris, and Chris is the one who brought me up and taught me how to do the basics of fighting, and she was always like... She always gave me the impression that she'd rather I just come out of it alive any way I needed to, so, you know. What if you had to threaten an innocent? Ugh. Getting real philosophical, real 
philosophical today, Apex. I've been thinking a lot. That's a hard one, actually. I mean, in general, no. But maybe if we were doing some subterfuge and I was pretending to threaten the innocent? I don't know. I don't think I'd like to do it really. Realistically, or you know what I mean. What? Men back at the arena. I killed a lot of their friends. And I don't regret it, but... I do wonder... Was there another way? You can't think like that. Well, you shouldn't think like that. There's... I mean... But the problem is I don't think when something threatens me, I don't think I act. And I don't always know before or after if how I'm acting is right. I mean, you act, Apex, but you tend to be pretty smart about it you got real good instincts mm -hmm. and i agree and i mean the answer to your question was there a better was there another way i mean hard answer yes there's always a different way to go about it but we don't know what it is we did our best with what we could do with you know will you promise me something yeah if i ever start to act in a way that you don't think I should. And he thinks back to uh, all of the times where they remained in, like rational and calm when we were surrounded by people who wouldn't necessarily kill us, but Apex immediately took as a threat. I need you to call me off. How do you mean? How so? You want me to just put a hand on your shoulder or something? I trust you, and I trust all of your judgment. If you tell me I shouldn't hurt something, I won't. You got it. Oh, Apex, <sighs> I've never been worried about that the whole time we've been together. You, you always listen to us. We could disagree sometimes, like, you know, back at the college, but you always give us good reasons why we should listen to you, too? Mm-hmm. You got a good insight on you. But, if you do go ahead and fall to your rage and whatnot, I'll, I'll, I'll throw a hand on your shoulder or something, all right? I'll let you know it's okay. Bastion nods. I get exactly what you're getting at. And when it comes to innocent people and whatnot, I, well, nowadays I think if they ain't part of the fight, they shouldn't be part of the fight. There is that word again. What is innocent? People that haven't gone looking for trouble. People that just want to live their life. That's a great way to explain it, actually. Mm. Mm. A lot of us are just trying to survive out here, whether it's for flying trades, repairing stuff to get settlements back in a working order like uh, stuff used to do or scavenging like Louise or helping people with their hurts like Cynthia or just going around and just making sure people are safe like Apex. And these innocents they remain so by acting Honorably, they survive without putting others at risk. They live within a certain set of rules. Things that you might find either benign or kind. Benign. They don't harmless. Mm. They don't act aggressively. They don't act to harm. Often, they might even act to help. They might get afraid, but they don't lash out without provocation.
He looks, uh, he sort of places a hand on his chin. He looks at this, he looks at the, um, the rocky, uh, ground beneath you as you walk, seemingly in thought. It's a, it's a bit of a privilege, you know, to get to be an innocent, as it were. Though I guess it's also kind of a privilege to let someone be that way, if that makes sense. We're all born innocent. Yeah. That's fair enough. I guess it's sort of like, you know, when my, my parents kicked off and, and Chris had to raise me the rest of the way. I know she worked damn hard to let me just be a kid as long as I could but there's a certain point where I couldn't live that way anymore or things need doing and I couldn't just be an innocent as it were you know had to step up and do stuff that got my hands dirty and then Phil comes along and even though he's doing the same stuff with me and Barry I kind of felt like oh, you know I wanted to shield him from the worst of the stuff we used to do and as I said that's why well, I didn't agree with Barry on certain things anymore. Mm. I never had such a thing, really. Jet and I had to learn to fend for ourselves at a young age. She doesn't want to make it a joke, but she just sort of smiles at, at, at you, Alvin. It's sort of like, you and her just rolled out of the womb and got started, huh? Well, we were pretty firm friends, but... Uh... Alvin has kind of a pained expression thinking about a couple things. Louise kind of reaches for his hand and gives it a squeeze. Sorry. Not a great joke, huh? No, no, you did fine. I was just thinking about the old stuff. But yeah, I never had anything like that. Her and I had a one thing led to another, and then we had to fend for ourselves. <laughs> barely, hell, barely teenagers, honestly. <laughs> then, you know, all that happened. I wave over at just my arms, and all that happened, and then. I woke up at Riverside, and now I'm here. <laughs> oh, you alright, Apex? <laughs> I ate one of the bad-tasting bugs. Oh, why did you do that? <laughs> it looked like one of the good-tasting bugs. You gotta start what? categorizing them then, man. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Ain't there just... critters that can go ahead and look like good critters but they're bad critters something like that or is it bad <clears throat> critters look like good critters yeah, both ways i'd assume some creatures can shift the pigments in their skin yes oh is that some... one of them then maybe Damn, that's nifty i know some death claws can get the fuck out really my uncle told me about them they can cloak almost as if they're wearing a stealth boy it's easier to see them when they're moving but hmm. above game Damn. connor would i know that because i came from that area uh know about death claws um cloaking like that go ahead and roll me a smart mm. A, a wits. This would be a wits, I think. <laughs> okay. That's a nine. Nine? You, you, you're aware that death claws, uh, there are, are variants. There are variants of death claw, um, that exist. Um,. You're not quite sure what all of them can do, but you've have heard that they 
Deathclaws adapt well to their environment and basically uh, can have interesting abilities. So you're not shocked at all that one can change its skin pigmentation to blend into its surroundings. Yeah, sounds about right. I mean, I don't know if I caught any of those near my vault, but I know they're supposed to be like different types and stuff. And I guess depending where they live and how the uh, mutations treating them, they get all sorts of fun little doodads. My uncle only ever ran into one. He said it took a whole squad to take one down and they still had casualties. It snuck up on them. Something like that sneaking shit. up. Makes sense, though. We, uh, never really tried to topple one of those things when they'd come near us. We'd just hold them off till we'd get people inside the vault and close the door. Apex nods shallowly. Only thing I know about Death Claws is if you is if we ever saw one, we would give it a wide berth and hope it kept moving. Ain't never really uh ain't, ain't never really went toe to toe with one of them before. Seems pretty restrained for raiders. Very sometimes when you very sometimes when you lost enough against one guy, you just knew when to go ahead and fold it and pack it in. <laughs> or find out where it's holding up and blow it up. Grenade bouquet above the cave entrance. Right? Ooh, fun. Ooh, it could be. It could. Has this look on her face sort of like, I want to make one of those. Taking down that, uh, taking down those, uh, Mara lyrics back in Earth City. That was a that was a very altered version of what I used to. So what you you've done this before, and I haven't gotten to see it. I'm all about fixing up our armor and whatnot nowadays, making weapons. I, I still haven't forgotten about looking up upgrades for Cynthia, but Dave helped out by helping me learn a couple tips and tricks about fixing Cynthia if she ain't banged up too bad, but uh, weapons and de weapons and explosions and whatnot. Nah, that ain't I haven't found the things for it. Not that I have been looking now and again, but well, that power armor hunt was a big thing. I am whew, I'm very excited about that one. <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is she sort of like does this thing with, with your hand and or your arm where she swings it up and down really far you know what I mean mm -hmm. she's like I'm just saying I would love to see you work on something like that how late I'll in the day is possible. it now oh sorry uh, you've been traveling for a while at this point um, it's a long and winding road it's very long <laughs> Let me see. Um, you've been traveling for a, uh, about an hour at this point. You've you've set off from the uh, uh, from the arena. Yeah, about an hour. So basically, the arena being the first thing you did. It would probably be getting close to uh, mid afternoon. Just continuing to keep my eye out for more danger or meat. Mm -hmm. As yeah. you as you walk down the road, you see a familiar sight in the distance. Uh, that of a small diner. Hey, there it is. Just like yesterday. Well, 
Should we go ahead and pop on in and take a look at some rumors? Maybe get a bite to eat or something? That... Uh, this place is, like, kind of fairly well-traveled. It's kind of like a crossroad diner, right? Yeah. Uh, and as you as you get closer in, you, you see that uh, it's a bit more lively than when last you found it. Ooh, I remember when we came here, there was, like, a guard with a gun. I do remember the guard with the gun. I remember Deathclaw Steaks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, as you approach, you, you do see uh, a man, a familiar man, sitting on the roof with a hunting rifle who seems to be taking in... Uh, just taking in some sun, just just basking in the different kind of radiation. Does he not notice us coming, or uh, I was gonna pop up there in a second? If he's not. <laughs> no, I'm just curious because we're traveling with a super mutant. Mm-hmm. That is valid point. point. That's a great point. Um, Louise will, yeah, Louise will give Alvin's hand one less squeeze and let go and be like, I recall they had some, uh, people garden last time we were here, so, uh, maybe I might get ahead of that before they, uh, <laughs> get twitchy. Oh, yeah, that might be for the best. And she will trot off ahead of them to the, uh, diner. All right, you, uh, run up ahead of the rest of your group, and you... Uh, come to the uh, rather familiar sight of the first bit of uh, friendliness you received after you escaped from the arena. E. Is that man just, uh, is he actually asleep or he's just sunning? Uh, he's he's just sunning right now. He's got himself a little umbrella. Um, and he uh, sort of, he pushes up his uh, aviators with one finger as he looks down at you. It looks like he's got a Nice little suntan in the shape of those glasses that he's wearing. Afternoon, look... sir. Yeah. You look uh, familiar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were, uh, my friend Alvin, he uh, fixed your uh, machine with the Cokes and stuff. Or the Nuka-Cola. He, like, plays with a toothpick in his mouth for a moment as he squints his eyes at you. Ah! And then he he like kicks the roof of the uh, of the metal diner, making a loud clanging sound from the inside. Hey, we got company. Uh, also, sir, um, we've got a new uh, friend with us, and uh, just want you to have the heads up, cause uh, she glances back the group. <laughs> well, you did right by us. Any friend of yours is a friend of ours. Okay, that's good. That's good. Because uh, he's a super mutant. <clears throat> a, a what? She just points. He, he he looks over at the rest of your group that is slowly uh, crossing over the horizon, and he... He um, he raises his rifles. He's got a scoped rifle, and he raises it, and he looks through the scope down at your group. Do I and he notice? lowers. Uh, <laughs> How quickly does he lower it? <laughs> <laughs> he, um... Hmm, what'd you notice from this distance? Uh, make a wits roll. That's a 12. 12? I might see a scope, Clint. Yeah, you, I, I you see, definitely I see... see... In the, I see a glint in the distance, and I know there's a rifle. Yeah, it's sunny enough to where you see a brief, brief flashes of light that indicates to you that that someone has uh, just uh, raised uh, the scope of a rifle, and you catch the reflection. Into of it. A sp I immediately break into a sprint. Apex. I look up. Should be good, man. They've got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> it should be good. Should be good. Don't worry. Don't worry. He probably ain't got binoculars or something. I don't know. I, 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 I stop. I try to collect myself because I'm trembling because I believe there's a gun pointed at me and I take a deep breath. 
Why would they have reason to shoot us? I fixed their fridge. <laughs> yeah, after a moment, Apex, you see the the glint uh, disappear, and you, uh, Louise, see Scott, the uh, the husband, uh, lower his rifle, and then he looks down at you, a bit puzzled, a bit agitated. Seriously, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. He's he's a good guy. He probably doesn't even want to come in. He's not a fan of small places. But right. he does have caps, and he does lack food. <sighs> well, as long as you keep a leash on him, I suppose. Oh, sir, please don't use that term. It's a little offensive, but really, no uh, worries. Well, He'll want to spend know, caps, trust me. He's got He's got money. I'm sure the people that they've mutilated and torn apart and shoved into bags found that pretty offensive, too, but... <laughs> Louise decides that she's not going to get into this debate right now because it's like, eh, come on, let's just. Uh, Hashtag not all super mutants, okay? <laughs> it's, like, oh. it's like, look, it's not. He didn't. It's not in his bindle, okay? Sometimes, sometimes the bag isn't full of gore. Sometimes it's full of money, collecting gore. Oh yeah, <laughs> Louise will just sort of nod and sort of wait, wait for the rest to pop up. And the the rest of you crest over the horizon, and you approach the the front entrance of the diner. It appears to have a few more people in it. Well, now this place is looking booming. Oh, I do love it. I do love a place like this booming. That's well, they've nice come song. a long way since you fixed things up for them. <laughs> You're making me sound like one of them celebrities in those faded magazines. Well, <laughs> we are in this kind of ways. world. Yeah. Having There'll cold drinks is a rarity. That There'll is a true. A lot more people there. Maybe some of them have seen Kirk. Or at least heard. Hey, that's... Yeah. No, that's, that's a good idea. Oh, well... Man. Uh, looks to Apex and Johan. Do you want me to keep a Johan company, Apex, while we go in and see about some grub? You hungry, Johan? Hmm. Yes. Hmm. There might be some places we can eat outside here. Does this diner feature outdoor sitting at all? <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like the only outdoor sitting is currently being used by Scott, as he is, uh, uh, sort of just... On the roof? Yeah, yeah, he's placed, uh, above the diner. <laughs> well, maybe if Johan, Johan, like, steps gingerly. <laughs> are there any, uh... Hmm. Are there any old dead trees about things, or, like, uh old rotted out cars things that we could just sit on uh yeah there, there's plenty of it you could throw a rock and find an abandoned car uh awesome yeah probably just like a, a a red pickup that has just been abandoned on the side of the road Is there an is there another car nearby it like anywhere? Yeah, you could you could probably just find another one. Hmm. Uh, I, I I point at the red pickup. Johan, I have an idea. Yes. Get out of the sun for a bit, and I mm. move over to the side of the pickup and act like I'm going to try to lift it on its side. I'm going to try to basically, uh, if you could help me, shift this truck we could make a small hooded seating space using the other one as a frame basically trying to tip the uh big truck over and get its truck bed to kind of like tp up to the roof of the other car kind of making a basically a giant metal lean to <laughs> i like that johan johan looks over at what you're trying to do and then he nods and he goes over to you and he relatively easily manages to flip this truck over on its side. Hmm. 
your muscles are very effective. Mm. They've served me well. Anyway, we're going to be guiding this thing into kind of like a seated lean to. Oh, you guys go you a, guys go have your chat. They got a project. <laughs> Always great to have your hands busy. All right, and you begin to approach the diner. Slowly and surely. And inside you can hear a, a radio playing a song. And you see uh, all throughout is... Uh, not, not jam packed, but, but definitely more people in here than you saw last time. Uh, as well as the, uh, sort of plump older woman, uh, that is darting from table to table with plates serving up, uh, hot and steaming food and drinks. And, uh, she, her eyes meet yours and she says, oh, it's you. Oh, welcome back. I haven't seen you in a dog's age. Well, well howdy there, in. Brenda. How you been? Oh, come in. Come in. Oh, yucks. All right. Cynthia smiles I, great big at Alvin. I have to tell you, ever since you did what you did for us, and, well, we told the people over in Westport and that radio DJ they had there mentioned the name of our little restaurant. We've been getting so much business, it's been hard to keep the caps inside of our little register. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, well, heck, I'm glad to hear that. Oh, man. Well, I, f I figured we come in, go ahead, get some food, and maybe go ahead and uh, uh, get some info about a couple fellas and We'll just go ahead and just uh, have a good old time. How's that sound? Info about a couple fellas. Well, I'll do what mm -hmm. I can, but I can certainly feed y'all. Now, come in, come in. Where's your, uh, where's your, uh, the, the one with the Brahmin skull? He, he's not, oh, uh -huh. he's not. No, he's, um, he didn't. He's outside with our new friend. Um, oh, okay. Glances okay. out the window. It's like, um, our new friend would probably be very hungry and very glad to spend some caps here. You just see Apex standing around like a form and like, you know, sh like holding his hand, like kind of pushing his hand to the left as uh, uh, Johan just kind of like lifts up the front of the truck, shifts it over slightly. Apex pauses his hands, mm, nods. <laughs> <laughs> you. you... <laughs> oh. Well, if he's got caps to spend, we certainly have room for him in here. Well, he doesn't quite like inside a lot, you know, given how big he is. He gets he a little cramped easily. Yeah, he's shy about enclosed places. But if you don't mind that they, uh, we all sort of just hunker outside with them and do our meal there, if that's okay. That'd be fine. Well, you're... S certainly you're fine to take your meals outside. Just be sure to bring the plates back when you're done with them. Well, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I can't keep it inside anymore. Do you still have those Brahmin steaks? No, oh, of course. Of course we got some Brahmin steaks. We just got in a fresh shipment of <laughs> new <laughs> product. Can, um, do you, does this place have menus, a menu like a at all um you see like little little hands drawn menus uh that are made of like old scrap paper like magazines with mostly blank pages stuff like okay. that louise will will take one of those and be like and be like to cynthia and alvin why don't you guys um uh get a little primary information if you like i'm gonna take this to apex and johan and see what they'd like all right can do yeah, be, be right back. Sounds chill. good to me. Chill head on out to Apex and <laughs> Johan. Apex is currently de-upholstering one of the cars to make a nice fluffy seated area. <laughs> you guys really are making this a project. 
just te- just tearing and ripping at an old fake leather like seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, she'll go on over to Johan, wave the piece of paper. I've got the menu here if you'd like to peruse what you'd like to eat. Mm, menu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, just basically saying what they got here to order. Has it got pictures on it or anything? Um. Other question. Can you, Johan can read, can't he? He read <laughs> comic book. Or oh, God, pretended that's right. To at least, he pretended to at least. Yeah, uh, it 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 would have like little there. It, it's like drawn on with crayon. So yes, it's uh, it would have like a vague round shape with like little steam lines coming off of it for like the <laughs> steaks and stuff like that. Yeah, it would have little so pictures, cute. but but yes, Johan Johan can read. Oh yeah, I'll just uh stretch my arm up to him then with it in my fingers. Here you go then, buddy. For him to he, look at or take from he, me. He, he like pinches it and, and leans down and looks at it. Mm, thank you. Ooh, not that one. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah, just as your casual background radio noise. Because I'm out of songs. <laughs> are, I'm out of Creative that? Commons songs. Um, the name oh, no. of the, the, uh, the musician who gives us so many fine tunes? Dale Kevin North? Or... Ke- Kevin... Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod, help us! We need more music! <laughs> um, yeah, he... Okay, um, What is this yellow thing? And he points cool. to he points to an omelet. Um, oh, it's a, it's an omelet. It's a, made of eggs. It's basically just eggs, kind of reshaped into a different shape. Hmm. Shaped nah. eggs. I could have nice that. Nice and fluffy, usually, usually. Pretty good. Fluffy. Mmm. I could have that and a steak. Here, like and he 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 digs some uh he digs some like a handful of caps out and and he gives you oh god how much does he give you. He gives you like twenty six caps in one handful, and he just shoves it in your direction. Is that a lot for what he wants? Like, I feel like a, I should specify with him. Well, to specify, Johan, how many eggs do you want in your omelet, and how many steaks do you want? Oh. Hmm. Uh. He turns to you, Apex. What sounds good? Depending on the type of egg they use, you would probably want at least four eggs and probably two steaks for somebody your size. Mm. If they are of sufficient size. Four eggs, two steaks. <laughs> All right. Apex, what about you? I look at the menu. Do they have anything special on there? Anything special? Uh... Let me. Last time they had Deathclaw egg, which intrigued me. Yeah. What would they have on special? Ooh. Uh, you would see, uh, a, a different addition to the menu is, uh, a, a Dandy Boy apple pie. Ooh. I will have a steak and the apple pie. Ooh, they got that now? Huh. 
mulls that over in her head. But she like, yeah, she takes, um, she walks, she walks back towards the entropy and like, all right, I'm on it. All right, and you you rush back into the the diner with uh, your orders. Now remind me, besides the the steaks and the eggs, like uh, I'm trying to remember what else they had. Um, they had pretty much your your typical uh your typical diner fare. They had uh prepared um like. Salisbury steak. They had prepared like mac and cheese. Um, Lots of old frozen TV dinners that just mm -hmm. never went bad. Ugh. Iguana bits. Stuff like that. All right. Um. Oh gosh, goodness. What's the name of the lady again? Brenda. All right, Brenda, for our tall friend, he would like an omelet with four eggs and two Brahmin steaks. Oh, my goodness. Hungry, ain't he? Well, look at him. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, I guess that would explain a lot. And how much will that come to? Well, seeing as how you did a good turn by us, I might as well return the favor. Uh, let's go ahead and say all your meals are half off, and, uh, let me think. And she, like, she opens, uh, she has this old-timey cash register that she punches a few numbers into. Uh, as I calculate. I calculate your meal. <laughs> I calculate your meal. I count it up. I make the numbers get bigger through addition. I am a ghoul man. <laughs> hmm, for y'all, all that round up to roughly 15 caps. Oh, all right. I'll give 15 of the 26 uh, Johan gave me and pocket the rest so I can give him back his change. All right. And she will uh, write a little note to herself and she'll put the caps in the cash register. And for and for Apex, he wants a steak in that uh, apple pie you got. And you know what? Double that. I'll have, I'll have the same thing. All right. All right. A steak and the apple pie. Oh, and I guess two ice cold Nuka Colas since you got them. A couple of ice cold Nuka Colas, and you know what? Since y'all were the ones that even allowed us to be able to make these, we'll go ahead and put those Nuka Colas on the house for you. Aww. Thanks, Brenda. All right, rest of your order is going to be 24 caps. All right. Hand that off to her. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm getting low on caps, though. <laughs> Don't worry. Connor will have somebody jump us, and we'll be flush with cash again. <laughs> I'm going to steal a dead body's money. Remember, a man in tail coats and a monocle pops up. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Remember wow. Louise, get the shoes, they're expensive. <laughs> Kick that monopoly play and looking fucker. Protect my thousands no. of caps. Oh, they You're died instantly. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we spawn the uh, golden axe loot gremlin. <laughs> just, she's just like, aha, you'll never take my money. Oh no, I'm dead. Please take my riches. Until next time. 
Mm-hmm. All right, take those goblin shoes. Those gotta be Bruce Hart, right? I got the monocle. I like his floppy hat. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking beating up a man. Don't so worry, the Brahmin skull, but just has a tiny hat on top of it. It's on. It's on one of the horns. It's fucking beating the <laughs> shit out of a man who's a cross between the Monopoly guy and Mr. Peanut. It's what he would have wanted. <laughs> If I see a sentient Mr. Peanut out of here, look, he's going to thank me for killing him, okay? Like, that can't be a nice existence. Oh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Alvin and Cynthia, what are you guys having? And have you met yeah, Cynthia, what are you anything? eating? Uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, Aw, she's for the funsies start. of it. What? You want me to gum up all my all my mechanics? I thought we you want, established you want, that you can eat. You just you, don't need to. You want me to take a pick and pick all that stuff out of Cynthia? Then don't eat the mac and cheese. Well, what's the point of living? Gumming up the system. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia would probably try and find someone to someone who looks traveled that she could talk to and ask about if they've seen any super mutants lately. Mm-hmm. Well, go ahead and make a wits roll. See if you can see anybody like that. Fourteen. That would be two sixes. <laughs> As it just so happens, you actually well, see uh, sort of a not ornery, but a, a very serious looking man uh, with sort of Spiked up brown hair wearing a, a set of leather uh a, a set of leather um like like a biker outfit with that appears to have a bunch of different modifications and padding on it. Uh he appears to have quite a few different weapons on him as well, and he looks familiar. And it's not until you see the man sitting across from him that you realize why he's familiar, because uh, this is the bodyguard of Bo. Oh. Well, and sitting across from him is the man himself. The man uh, of a legend. Then Cynthia will go up and say, well, howdy. He he looks up from his meal. He's like he's like got like a a fork full of Salisbury steak that he's guiding towards his mouth, and he looks over and he slowly sets it down. Well, howdy yourself. It's been some time since I ran into y'all. Yeah, things have been a little hectic. I feel since we saw you last. You're telling me. Would it trouble you terribly if I sat down and we chatted to catch up for a bit? He's he sort of looks over to uh, his bodyguard and he like motions for him to scoot over in his seat. He just goes <sighs> and he <laughs> very As shiny fifties plastic. Slow rubber. was the Zora King and <laughs> freaking. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's so goofy to me. Uh, it took fucking five minutes. <laughs> so uh, she she gets on in and doesn't want to wants to have that kind of conversation where you can still eat in be and and converse in between. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been quite a while since we saw you. I, I'm not sure where you quite wandered off to after we saw you. Um, well, it's in the nature of my end. it's in the nature of my business to wander. True. Yeah. Well, I've been all over since we last saw each other, and I can imagine it's been an interesting climate for trading. I'll say. I have a feeling that. We might have had a little to do with that, but yes. Tell me more yeah. about it. Well, for starters, the uh, 
the folks over at the arena, well, they're not really trading with anybody at the time. Right. Seeing as how they are using most of their resources to shore up their uh, abode. And to right. pay off debts and whatnot. They sustained uh, pretty heavy damage from a uh, fallout. Yeah. No, oh, <laughs> looks, looks at the camera. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> he <laughs> said the word! So hey, hey, Apex, he said the word! <laughs> it's happening! <laughs> yep, sure Roll credits. <laughs> just look pointedly toward the camera <laughs> as we all just laugh and do the sitcom laugh and it fades out. <laughs> the evil thin two thing where we slowly look at the camera. So, not much business with them, and, uh, what about elsewhere? Hmm. Well, I doubt you're really interested in my business. Seems to me like there's something specific you want to know. Never hurts to know the climbing of things. We've been wandering around quite a bit, trying to fix up Riverside in ways that we can. Um, helping out friends, making new ones along the way. Mm. Um, we're actually wondering if you've seen, uh, came across a super mutant named Kirk. Had a cow named Pepper with him. Didn't know if you might have come across him. Well, any super mutants I may or may not have come across, I never got close enough to to ask their name. I either fought or ran. Though I can say with some certainty that most of the super mutants that I have seen are... Well, they circle either around the fall or past the arch. Huh. Fall or... Where is the fall again? It's where we saw that giant, like, right. alpha death claw. <laughs> I might have had a little screen covering that up. Huh. Nothing anywhere in between? Well... Would have been a big fella. Hmm. You're talking about a lone super mutant? Yes. You know... I think I have actually heard about... Uh, you said he's got a Brahmin with him? He, he does. Very protective of it, too. Well, I haven't seen anything like that myself, but... Some of the other people that I've seen on my travels have... told me some strange anecdotes about seeing a super mutant walking a cow around like it's a dog. Really? That sounds about right, honestly. Hmm. It's around this area, too. Somewhere between St. Luke's and Vault 85. Oh. Well, that's perfect. That's... I think where we're headed anyway. We, uh, have a friend who wants to meet him. Another huh. super mutant. You're traveling with a super mutant. Yes. Hmm. He's a big sweetheart named Johan. Interesting. He's one of those intelligent super mutants, then. Yes. Quite hmm. so. Haven't seen one of them in a long time. Well, whenever you're done eating, you can come out and meet him if you'd like. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to make new friends. The bodyguard uh, <clears throat> clears his throat a little bit. <clears> throat> <laughs> Boss, easy now. Sure, why not? She looks over at the bodyguard. I promise there won't be trouble. <sighs> uh, 
he just rolls his eyes and goes back to his meal. <laughs> mm. And uh, everything been going okay with you overall? Well, business has been uh, a bit more lackluster than usual. Given what you pulled in the arena and given the ramifications it's had in Westport, there are people that are less eager to spend their caps than before. She sort of uh, starts flattening the crease a little more on a napkin. <laughs> Getting like that nervous <laughs> fidgeting of like, yeah, we did do that. Apex feels good about himself somewhere. He doesn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if there's anything I can do to help you with things, I'm more than happy to do so. Mm, unless you're planning on buying something or uh, attracting in some bighorn farmers, then honestly, I'm not sure there's really much you can do. Hmm. I don't think, uh... Well, you know, I'm not actually sure. Mm, I'll keep traveling around, and if I hear anything, I can send word back to this diner and leave notes for you. The staff here are pretty happy with us since we fixed up their fridge. Mm, well, I'd appreciate that. Hmm. Hmm. Why do you want to find this super mutant anyway? Seems to me like you should have something better to do. Tasks of our own to take care of, just like you have business of yours. Yeah, but with the archers. Is... Yes. But sometimes the things you do coalesce. She looks at him a little pointedly. All right. Sometimes life surprises you when... when a good gesture becomes... the right choice. Hmm. Well... If you say so. Cynthia kind of smiles because she's like, I'm talking so cryptically. <laughs> this probably <laughs> makes no sense to this guy. But she also doesn't know how much he knows or what she can say. You work with the archers quite a bit then. I trade from time to time. Do they seem all right to you? Mm. Now, what do you mean by all right? I know they have a cause and they believe in it strongly. But the line between believing in something and being a zealot for an idea or an ideology, it, it, it can get blurred awful fast. And, I don't know, I'm a bit newer around here, and I guess I just don't have enough of a pulse on everyone to know how people feel about things. Brooch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> freaking rude. <laughs> I'd have a pulse if I could have one, all right. But you don't. You have what would probably be a light whir. Wow, twisting the knife. Wow. <laughs> I know it doesn't hurt her, but still. Shut up and eat your brahmin stick. <laughs> oh. Yeah, go eat your brahmin stick, you jerk. Bo will reach up and he'll sort of scratch the back of his bald head in thought. Hmm. The archers, well, they're a pretty self-serving bunch. They'll lend their 
considerable mercenary service out to whoever is willing to pay for it, but they're not really as benevolent as, say, the Brotherhood of Steel, whom they somehow managed to muscle out of the arch grounds long, long ago. Hmm. They're less benevolent than the fascists. Jesus. <laughs> well, Rare form today, huh? <laughs> I guess that gives me some insight. It's always good to have different perspectives on people, you know? Sometimes you only get to see one side of someone. Yeah. Sometimes you see too much. Hmm. That's true as well. Still, from what I hear, you're in... Sorry, go ahead. You're in good with the archers. Sure, I put my foot in the door for y'all, but they gave you the key. They have. They've been good to us. Mm. We've Sounds like you could tell me more about them than I could tell you. Maybe. Probably. But, uh... I always like to ask just to know. Sometimes people show kind of colors to certain people rather than uh, people they're less acquainted with or have less of a, a different working relationship with, you know? That's fair, I suppose. Well, whenever you're done eating, uh, feel free to come on out and say hi to Johan and the rest of the crew. I'm sure they'd be happy to see you. Oh, and we could check out whatever you've got in your wares this time around. Sure, sure. If you're planning on buying, I'd be more than happy to sell. And, uh, about how much do you think his meal would be? Um, well, you saw Louise go up and, and pay before you got your meal. So if you're, if you're trying to, if you're trying to buy his meal for him, then it, he seems yeah. to have already paid. Ah, okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. Then she'll uh, save that for another time. And uh, give him a nod and give the bodyguard a nod and, and head on out. Is Bo also, mm -hmm. is there anyone sh and after whatever you're about? Oh. Huh? Sorry. What's Ope? <laughs> uh, sorry. Ope. Everything went black on my screen for a second. Oh, oh God. Oh. Uh, That's um, scary. Oh, your screen. Yes, okay. it was. Yeah. Um, whenever she gets up, she's going to scan the restaurant to see if there's anyone else of note that she might go talk to. But sorry, go ahead. Uh, I wasn't going to say anything. He's, I was just going to mention that uh, Bo and uh, the bodyguard will nod back to you. Did I ever tell you the bodyguard's name? No, we only know him as the bodyguard for a very long time. Oh, he's, uh... Wait, hang on. Did you, though? Caitlin says, knowingly asking everybody's name. I... <sighs> That's how he got fucking A and fucking L. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that. Ah, uh, yes, the, the, the Swedish twins. <laughs> Yes, yes. I am fucking Hello, Hello, fucking A. Hello, fucking A. No, we don't. We don't have names for them. Okay, never mind. Uh, the bodyguard's name... The bodyguard's name is Hunter. Oh, wow. Fair Getting... enough. Very JRPG look to him. I'm a fan of him. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, he, he looks like he's seen some shit. Just from a cursory glance. Uh, but yes. Uh, so you, you go back out to see Apex and... Uh, uh, I was going to say that she will probably try to see who else is in the diner of like information gathering potential or is it just like everybody looks like normal people oh yes um they they look like as as normal as you could find in the wasteland um okay there uh, appears to be mostly scavengers just trying to find a meal for the day gotcha Uh, so then, yes, she will go out to talk to uh, Apex and Johan. Okay. By this point, I've ripped out the upholstery of that car and have created a nice little seating area beneath this little lean-to we've made. Mm -hmm. It's a little cramped for Johan, but it fits me great. It obscures the shade just enough. So what do we do? We just wait? Like last time. Yeah, they're making the food and they'll bring it to us or somebody will. I see. Oh, look, there's Cynthia. And I point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she waves and has a big smile on her face uh, that that says good information is, is coming to you. But not food. <laughs> not food. Mm. A little longer. She seems happy about something. Mm. Good news, I take it. Very. I think there's been rumblings of Kirk and Pepper somewhere between St. Luke's and Vault 85. That's about where we saw them last time. Hopefully it's somewhat recent, but I heard it from Bo, the trader we met before. He said he'd be out shortly to uh, trade his wares and say hello to our new friend. Does he have any ulterior motives? What do you mean? I don't know. Oh, People who are no. guided by money are hard to trust. No, no. Uh, I was the one who said that we should look at his wares, and I was also the one who said he should come say hi to Johan. You know, it's easier to be a little less skittish when you know someone, you know? Hmm. I nod. So we're that much closer to finding Kirk and Pepper. I look to Johan. Mm. Just to kind of gauge his response to this information. He he seems to take to it well. He he smiles and, and nods. This is good. We are making good time. Yes. I think it's about another day's travel south from here. Mm. Is that about right? Because I, I remember it uh, being about that long to get to St. Luke's from the... Mm, kind of-ish. Yeah. God? <laughs> oh, God. Allow me to... My mouse is alive. There it is. Where the hell are you on the map? Um. Oh. Um. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um. Come 
Come on. How long is... Oh, for the love of God. Yeah, yeah, it, it'd be around... It'd be around a day before you go back towards the area that you were last time. So, yeah, we should be there by... Tomorrow evening, maybe. At least in the area. Hmm... One day, and then I will see another of my people. That's the plan. What do you plan to do when you meet them? I suppose I will ask Kirk about us, what we do. If there are more of us somewhere, where he comes from, what sort of society we have. I hope that he will take me to them. Cynthia looks at Apex a little concerned apex glances back he knows that uh kirk is solitary he's not sure if it's by choice or because he was exiled or something but right it's definitely uh, something that he's pondering now johan yes what if what if there isn't a society he he sort of tilts his head what do you mean well what she, she tilts her head. What if the only super mutants that Kirk has met are wanderers like you have been up until now? And I guess still are, technically. No, there have to be more. You humans, you know what I am. You fear us. There have to be more. Think that there are, but I don't know. Connor, are the stories of, you know, tribes of super mutants kind of like acting as like barbarous forces and tearing people apart fairly common knowledge? Most of you would be aware that super mutants are sort of interspersed uh, and uh, peppered, har har, uh, throughout, throughout the lands in their own sort of not even tribes would be accurate. This just they're sort of groups or gangs. Um, Communes. Yeah. Uh, there aren't terribly many in St. Louis. But you 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 would know that that super mutants are are referred to in in that they will occupy occupy places and they will uh kill and loot people that they find for the most part the, the fact that you the fact that you're talking to an intelligent ghoul is very strange or uh super mutant yeah oh yes 
Mm. Well, most people, the stories about your kind, those that do live in groups live in fairly small groups, and they tend to pillage and kill any other societies around them. It's why so many act very defensively when they find you and often attack you without provocation. He sort of looks at the floor again and he thinks, What would you do if you joined a society like that? Would you act as they act? I... I do not know. Hmm. If what you say is true. And I don't have a reason to doubt you. But I will need time to think. I want to see it for myself, though. Of course. And we only have the information that we have to go off of. Mm. We've met humans who are capable of greater evils than what I've heard super mutants have done. There is no reason for me to judge without knowing either. Then why do they fear us? Because stories have power. Oftentimes the story has more power than those in them, a reputation, un... after we, that place we just came from, the arena, they originally had us imprisoned, but we were the first to break out. They gave us a name. They called us the Runaways. And that reputation had more power than we did. It followed us and colored people's opinions of us before we could do anything. In a way, the stories that people tell end up becoming true because it's what people expect. Maybe that's why the stories of super mutants as they are. Until we know, we won't know. Why did you not treat me with hostility when we could, first met. I could tell by looking at you that you didn't mean me harm. You were not acting aggressively. So you do not believe the stories about my people, our reputation. I believe that maybe your kind has as much nuance as humans do. Perhaps there are groups of super mutants that are bad, just as there are groups of humans that are bad. But maybe more the Maybe society has taken more stories about them being bad and haven't heard any of the good ones. 
nuance. Subtleties. Little details in a story. Mm. Good and bad. And I guess ultimately it's up to you to decide what kind of a super mutant you want to be. And whether the society that you end up finding is right for you or not. Alvin, he used to travel with a group of humans that, well, many of them would be what I consider bad. They would hurt people, steal from them, and kill them for fun or profit or who knows what reason. But Alvin isn't like that. But Alvin is not among his people. I think we are Alvin's people. His true people. True people. No. I guess that's a definition you'll have to find for yourself. If I decide this definition is the one that fits our reputation, Will you think ill of me as you do Alvin's false people? Will I be bad too? That's something I've been thinking about a lot. I've killed a lot of things that I believe to be bad. But... Maybe it isn't as... Maybe it's not so black and white. Maybe it isn't all or nothing. Maybe the people that do bad things have good reason. And maybe the people that do good things have bad reasons. The world is complicated. It's easier to see things in heroes and villains. And you can see him start to kind of shake a little bit. He starts blinking a bit more rapidly. To answer your question, I don't know. And I look at uh, Johan. If you decide that killing people is the right way, I don't think I would agree with you. And I think I would try to stop you. But I don't think that's what you think. And I hope I'm right. Johan closes his eyes for a long moment. The sound of the wind rolls past you, blowing a few clouds of dust in your direction. A silent moment passes and is broken by Brenda's voice shouting, Food Zone! Apex and that's where, <laughs> that's where we're going to take oh our break. Oh my god. <laughs> Yay! What a, what a break. Food, the great leveler. I was like, oh, my existential <sighs> crisis. Oh, food, thank God. Food will <sighs> make this tense moment better. That was a fun conversation. Mmm. Very interesting stuff. Ugh. I will go bathroom. Yeah. Quick nah. break, and then we'll get right back into it. Hello, chat. How are you? I'm going to rest my Enjoy voice. <laughs> Enjoying the nuances of good and evil.
it has started raining. It was supposed to thunderstorm here today. Oh, I was disappointed because it didn't. I've been really wanting some rain around here. It's been like over 100 degrees all week, and it's supposed to be like in the mid 110s next week. So, oh, yeah, I, I would I would love rain. Well, if it's here, it might be heading your way soon. I hope it's heading soon. Connor, I heard your demo tape. Well done, my man. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that's been in production for a thank long time did. now. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds really good, fella. Glad people like might, it. Uh, Might have something to add to it soonish. Hmm. I wonder Herm. what that might be. Herm. Ow. What? My headphones just popped. Oh, oh dude, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy. I'm going to run to my mini fridge real quick. Oh, wait, uh -huh. no, it's great. I'll make tea. Tea, yes. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I like uh, that. Edwin Tiong, otherwise known as Omadon, mixed that for me. Nice. Yeah. Nice Edwin's good people. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, for the first time in I think eight years I have a demo reel. I just updated mine too uh, a few weeks back. Since I finally had enough stuff that I can actually throw together like a real reel. Mm hmm. A real reel? Yeah, really, really of, real. Like, stu stu stuff of work I've been paid for. Hopefully, I'll have uh, some stuff to update my visual reel with as well. Uh huh. Yeah. The, wow. hardest bit, the hardest bit was collecting all of the audio in like a good quality. <laughs> Always is. I'm going to grab some water. So how was your birthday, Caitlin? Uh, it was good. Um, I've just been eating. <laughs> I went to like win. Japanese barbecue one night and Korean barbecue the next night. And my roommate got me a bunch of gluten-free snacks. And I got a birthday box from you. Yeah. And uh, I'm currently in San Francisco. I was in Vegas last weekend. <laughs> Big adventure going on right now. It's It's been a lot. I mean, it's good. It's yeah. It's been fun. My So my parents um, did this, like national monument they're part of this group thing so they they got to do this national monument park tour thing and mm -hmm. it landed them in vegas so um i drove out there from la and we all got to hang out and we went to afternoon tea and it was really nice and then came home and worked a bunch and had tried to have dinner with with some peeps the nights I was here, and then I drove to San Francisco uh, Thursday evening, and I got to see my friend Michael Johnston is currently doing a play, Let the Right One In, at Berkeley right is that now. Is the, uh, like, from the vampire short story? That's the vampire yeah, one! Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's the vampire one. I got so excited um, when I heard that, I ran back into my room. <laughs> yeah. So it was like the craziest, that's the craziest play I have ever seen. Yeah. Um, it was by yeah. like, I think it was originally a short story, then it was like a Swedish film, and then they made an American remake of it. They made an American remake, and then the play was actually made for Scot Scotland. Oh. Um, but then they've adapted it for an English audience. So this is, I think, the first run of this play. Oh, nice. Um, and then Michael plays Johnny in it. Um, it's it's wild. Like, it's heavy movement. There was, like, dancing in it. There's tons of blood. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, holding, like, stringing a guy up and bleeding him out. And, like, tanks of water. It, it was crazy. 
Sounds like, uh, like I I love um, live theater. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been very blessed recently with theater. I also saw uh, Six recently, which is um, it's like Henry the Eighth's Six Wives, mm. and like the stories of their lives, but done in a way where each wife is like a pop star that we know of like Beyonce and Ariana Grande and Britney Spears and Adele and so each one had a different song style and the the various artists that they chose were like in line with the stories of the wives lives huh. um and it was done like a concert it was really cool that Interesting. was crazy um but it was really cool it was really cool yeah, live Texas, theater's wild. Te Texas ain't got much theater. <laughs> well, normally I don't go to a lot of live theater, but... I mean, my friend was in this play, and then the other one was uh, my friend who does go to more live theater. Actually fell ill the day before they were going to go, so they mm. gave me their ticket. Bearded away on stage in movie theaters. Ooh! Wow. Ugh. Yeah. I think, although I will say the best stage play I've ever seen in my entire life, bar none, was the Final Fantasy X play. Oh, the Kabuki? In the, yeah, the Kabuki. Final Fantasy X Kabuki. That, that was, still sounds so cool. I... I my, my brain is still, like, flabbergasted at how flawless everything about it was. And it was, like, eight hours long. So... Uh, Holy how do you Lord. do th how? <laughs> yeah. I've seen, I've seen a lot of great plays, musicals, and otherwise. Uh, though my favorite, cheesily enough, will always be Evil Dead the Musical, just because of how bonkers it is, and I'm just a big Evil Dead oh. fan, so. And I'm the, sorry, like, it's hot fun. Kool Aid they spray on you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hey, I, 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 si I signed up to sit in the splatter zone. Unfortunately, like. Oh, know, I had the shirt I, too, yeah. Yeah. I That's went really to see it in team. Minnesota, which is like, you know, third run kind of area. So like it was more like a a, a pink water than actual like viscous that, the, you know, the syrupy blood that you see in the actual advertisements for it. But yeah. What's mm -hmm. Oh, that? no. The one in Vegas <laughs> was also like this, the water. They were oh, never going to do the viscous. Yeah, they were never going to do the viscous blood I th thing. I, th I think they did the viscous. I think they did the viscous. I think they did the viscous blood thing in the original runs that it did uh, mm -hmm. off Broadway in New York and in Michigan. Because I remember seeing like and... footage of the viscous blood in the splatter zone. And I bet you that they got in trouble because people who weren't in the splash zone probably got hit with it and it was impossible to get out. Hard to say. I, I, I wouldn't know. All I know is I went there and I wanted it and that isn't what I got. Anyway, I'm going to go pee real quick. That's, <laughs> hey, there you go. Okay. This tea is really good. I'm so hungry. Oh yeah, what kind? It's Yorkshire Gold. <gasps> it's the Yorkshire! Phil! Phil's asleep. But Phil, in your sleep, you should know the Yorkshire is being consumed. No, no, I sent him a picture and he was like, show me the label. And I wow. sent him the label and he was like, good, one bag. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And I was, he was just like, milk! And I'm like, what milk? And he was like, this milk! And I was like, I don't have this milk, but this comes from like one of the best creameries in Ohio. And they're just like, oh my God. and Phil was just like, that will do! He was very passionate. Well, yeah, he's British, and it's tea. And so, like, yeah, that I... Kind of and, thing. And so I, uh, and yeah, I, I had it, and I'm just like, you know, most of the tea I've had was just like, you know, oh, that's tea. But, like, this tea, I'm just like, am I becoming the tea guy? Oh, I'm the tea I mean, guy now. This welcome is so to lovely. The, welcome to the community. <laughs> oh, I love tea now. It's so good. Uh -huh. I'm so excited you're here, tea -hee. Teehee? Teehee. It's, Tee it's, it's great to be here, Kaylin. <laughs> Teehee. Teehee. <clears throat> oh, man. I think it just exerted the fastest reaction time in my life. I sat, down my, 
I sipped in my glass and I thought I heard oh. it about to about to tip over and I was just like Gah! and I <laughs> Turns out nothing happened, but oh my God. I thought, <laughs> I thought you were talking about dashing back into the room to be like it's No, uh my my friend so Taylor a long time ago. Um he showed me Let the Right One In, the the Swedish film. Mm -hmm. ah. And it was a very interesting experience. I and so I was, I, haven't I was like, seen the movie oh, movie. I know that. Well, yeah, because you I don't like horror. I understand that reference. You, yeah, I don't. You don't you, oh, you don't like horror. I was about to say, Connor, you don't like yeah, horror? Yeah, Connor's about here? it. I was about to say, I I mean, what one. is this? <laughs> I mean, I, the I didn't really, I didn't really see it as as horror. I saw it as funny vampires. Oh, no. that's true. Oh, that's a, that's why I saw that's why I saw Renfield. I knew it would be uh, goofy and cheesy, but I was like, "Tee -hee, goofy vampire." <laughs> Which one's got him? Let the right one in. Oh, good. Oh, I don't know about funny vampires, but it's a good, it's a good, it's a good movie. Mm hmm. My, I'm looking forward to the new Indiana Jones movie. When it comes out, I uh, I keep seeing te I keep seeing test reviews saying that it's like super mid and that's so disappointing. Mm. My my no no it's for my dad. My dad ah. has been vibrating a hole in his couch, his storage wars couch, just waiting for this movie. I have never seen him this excited for a movie since Crystal Skull came out. Yeah. I was just I I was just like drawing in my room and he kicked open his door and he was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "Nothing." He was just like, "We're watching a movie." And I was like, "Where?" And he's like, "Get in the truck." Wow. <laughs> and the entire time we were watching it, he was like he kept rubbing me with his elbow going like that was really fucking cool. Like, I'm just I'm just like I have We're going to go see Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> he's going to swing with the monkeys. <laughs> my dad just loves Indiana Jones so fucking much, man. That's great. <laughs> like, I never want to yuck anybody's yums. Oh, like, exactly. Exactly. Gotta love what you love. Oh. Well, I ain't no good. Uh... What? My huh? mouse is dead. Uh, oh. Uh, Do you have a spare? Um, I'm gonna hook it up. I have a spare. Would you mind waiting four days? <laughs> well. Oh my god. Or I can drive twelve hours again. I have is it to a figure wireless out. Mouse. It is a wireless mouse. Mm. Hit. Oh, then probably the battery's busted. Maybe. There we go. All right, we're back in business. Hot damn! There you go. You scaled me. All right. Let me just take a, a, a little sippy here. A little sippy of the drippy. Mmm, <sighs> delicious agua. Sweet little man. Delicious aqua pura. I can I can feel uh I can feel myself getting better already. Well yeah, that's how I feel with tea. This has been the only tea brand where I've just like drank it. I was like, that was really good. An hour passes and I'm just like, I could go for another. <laughs> ah Phil will be so pleased. Oh he already is. I'm sure he is. All right. Well, are we ready to get back into it? Yeah. Uh, yes. yes. Here. I am ready to eat my steak. Eat. Bye, everybody. Oh, bye, Goodbye, chat. chat. Goodbye. What's this one? No, nah, it's a little serious. Um, we'll just we'll just go back to this.
So, um, Brenda comes out and approaches uh, your little truck lean to, carrying some plates of, of steaming meat and eggs. Immediately, my attention is on that. Hello there again, Apex, and, well, this must be your friend I've heard so much about. This is Johan. Um. Hello. Uh, pleased to meet you. Oh, well, the pleasure's all mine, big fella. Hmm. Cynthia looks at them both and has a warm smile, trying to also give a bit of a diffusion to her stress. Um, Alvin and Louise, uh, where would you be during this time? Are you still in the diner or are you going to um, be eating with the rest of your comrades? I assumed we followed her out with the food, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you would already have your food in that case. And here are your ice cold Nuka Colas, and she, uh, she she takes a a um, she sort of has uh, a a silver ring on one of her fingers, and she flips it so it uh, so it's uh, the front of it is reversed and facing down. She hooks the uh, an angle on it underneath the bottle cap and. Uh, rips off the cap with her finger. God, I've opened a cap like that with a ring before. That hurts. Oh, no, it's so good. You just gotta get used to it. It's just, what finger can you just worship? <laughs> oh, Brenda's a woman after my own heart. Fuck yes, I own three of those no, rings. Rabbit, I take this more uh, on your word, except that you just dislocated your finger last week. That was my pinky. Not I, feel my like you, I feel like your fingers might be lacking feel... feeling. <laughs> Well, to be fair, mine was just like a regular ass wedding ring. I don't think it was meant to be a bottle cap. Opener. Nope, I got three of those bottle opener rings. Okay, yeah, mine mine was not a specialized ring. I take uh. my Nuka Cola. <laughs> For destroyer being and my it is, and my apple pie. Your apple pie smells like. Processed apples and cinnamon and buttery goodness. The closest I, is the closest I will know to real apples. The or steak, McDonald's apple pie. The steak is fragrant and hot, as if it had just come right off the grill. And your Nuka Cola, uh, a rare treat, as it's the frosty glass touches your hand. I enjoy that first while it's still cold. Mm-hmm. It is very refreshing. Thank you. Of course. And if you ever need anything else, just let me know. We'll let you know, Branda. All right. Well, enjoy your meals. And she hurries back inside. We'll turn to Johan and say... Uh, we got a bit of a discount, Johan, so, uh, here's your caps back that I didn't need to use. Hmm. You can keep them. Uh, really? You sure? Yes. I have plenty in here. <laughs> you know, that is true. All right. Um. Oh gosh, I'm trying to remember. How much was his again? Sixteen. Yeah, it was sixteen. Give you like twenty-seven. You got like eleven. Oh god! Thank you for doing math. Yeah. I love quick math, fun hobby. Ye. And you all sit down and enjoy your meals. It's nice to have a, a warm meal and a cold drink. It's yeah, a rare. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a so rare good. treat. Sounds amazing. And Cynthia, if you could feel anything, you're sure it would be amazing as well. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty top tier, not going to lie. Lyle's that hard, wistful smile looks up at the sky like, yeah, it would be good. You can have it, just has to clean a little bit. No, no, <laughs> no. Come on, live dangerously, Cynthia. Do we not do that enough already? Yeah, not but you're used to taste. that now. I have, uh -uh. Replaced, I have replaced her leg with various parts laying around and also a picker-up truck sticker. <laughs> I mean, look, I know her leg's been a gun, but nothing compares to the thrill of trying to do mac and cheese out of your metal guts. Listen, I like my danger on the outside, not the inside, okay? It's true. I like external danger, not internal yeah, danger. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah, fist bump, Caitlin. We know what we're about. Mm -hmm. Bump. 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 You don't, you, uh, <laughs> you are part of never this. Mind. I just want to be included. <laughs> anyway, sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, it was just, oh my god, it's so good. Oh god, it's so good. You enjoy your meals for a little while, and then eventually, uh, Bo and Hunter, uh, come out of the diner and they start making their way towards you. Um, Hunter has sort of his hand on the butt of his gun. But he is, it's not drawn and it's, he's not like holding it, but he's being pretty cautious as you all approach, as uh, they approach you, rather. Safety well, measures. Hey he's there. Nervous. I keep my eye on Hunter, as I believe I did the entire first time we met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds right. Well, how was your meal? It was absolutely delicious. Thank you for asking. Yeah, this place has been seeing an upturn in business ever since you came by. Well, that's all Alvin's <laughs> doing. Down. Oh. Yeah, that's true. I'm glad I got that thing rolling. But, uh, I heard you might have some wares we could take a look at. Oh, As yeah, a matter, you parts? matter of fact, I just might. Let me go ahead and see if I can find you anything in, interesting in here. And he'll, he'll, um, you, you remember he had a, a pack Brahmin with him and he, um, uh, walks around the, the side of the building, the diner, and he retrieves, uh, a familiar looking Brahmin with a large uh, set of packs on it that sort of slowly meanders over to you. Let's see here. Just offloaded some stuff from my previous escapades, but. Here's what I've got right now. I've got four rounds of 10 millimeter pistol ammunition. Exciting. That's it. <laughs> Hang <man> on. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, just... oh, it's like I'm trying to calculate jerks. <laughs> I just like to imagine I have four rounds of 10 millimeter piece to ammunition and just stand there smiling. <laughs> That's it. Wow. <laughs> Any questions? Well, here is something interesting I might have picked up. And he uh, unfurls uh, Louise a familiar looking sight to you. Uh, as you see the blue and yellow hues of a leather vault jumpsuit. Oh, shit. Where'd you get that from? Is there a number on it? Uh, there is a number on it. 
Uh, he flips it over, and it says 85 on the back. Vault oh. 85, oh. I'm guessing. Yeah, Blinks is like, oh, that's <laughs> coincidental. Where'd you happen to get that, Bo? Hmm, it's strange. I uh, ran into uh, a collector of odds and ends in Westport who came across a man who sold him one of these. Oh, really? Did that, uh, collector have a description of that man? Hmm. Would he have? Hmm. I didn't really inquire too much about that. Getting into other people's business is a uh, fast track to uh, becoming unhealthy. Uh, fair enough. Though, if I might get into your business just a little further, this collector, is he normally around Westport? I think he lives there. Good to know. Maybe I'll just inquire with him if he's willing to share. How are things in Westport these days? Hmm. Feels like things are balancing on a razor's edge over there, if you ask me. It seems like there's a bunch of remnants of the family that are holding up in there. The whole, whole lot of shaking is about to happen in Westport, if you ask me. Well, though it's good business, I aim to be far away from there when it happens. But... If uh, if you're wanting to inquire more, the collector's name is Solomon. Solomon. Louise nods. Yeah, kind of need to. Thanks for the heads up. What kind of things does he collect? Well... He's got all sorts of different odds and ends from all around. Uh, he's got things from vaults. He's got those old Vault Boy Vault Tech lunch boxes. He's got uh, weapons, if that's what you're looking for. Unusual, hard to find things. Whose side does he tend to favor in Westport? Hmm. Well, I can tell you that he didn't exactly mind the status quo back when it was the status quo. But. If you ask me, I'd say he's on his own side. I think he just likes to take the easiest path to get there. Apex takes his stake in both hands and starts gnawing on it. That's all about it. That's all I know about that. Yeah, sorry to sidetrack you. Um, yeah, no worries. She takes a second and sort of like pinches the bridge of her nose and it's just like, so, uh, yeah, what else you got? Right. Uh, I was showing you my wares. For you, Alvin, I've got some scrap electronics. 
Nice. If and you're needing anything done with uh, something on the science or technology side, then these might be useful. Well, it's time for a project. <coughs> How much you want to part for now? Hmm. It is scrap. I'd say a, oh, let's just say a cap. I'll take that off your hands. He, he slides you what looks to be uh, just a very disorganized bundle of wires of every color that you could think of and a couple of uh, uh, greenish circuit boards that he slides over to you. You would know that these can be used for... Practically anything on the science side of uh, your particular skill set. Yeah, these work. Nice I've got some. Too. Mm -hmm. I've got some wonder glue. Immediately pat my belt. Hold on. Let me see how my glue supply is. Yep, still great on the glue end. All right. <laughs> I've got some Dandy Boy apples. I've got two cases of those. How much? Mm, let's see. I'm kind mm -hmm. of licking the... Uh remnants of the cardboard sleeve that my pie was in. <laughs> no shame. I do the same thing. Uh, seven caps each. I dig into my fanny pack and count out 14 caps and I hand them to him. I will take my dandy boy apples. Pleasure. And he slides you some dandy boy apples. I have seven nine millimeter rounds. Let's see. Uh, uh Cynthia will take those. How much? Um, nine millimeter. You said seven of them? Seven, yes. Okay, uh, amazing. Uh, they're a cap each. Great. She will hand off as many caps. Okay. He slides you, uh, just a small carton with, uh, seven shiny rounds in it. Hmm. Louise will, because uh, I have my inventory still, Louise will pull out a pair of gloves and a pair of loafers and say, can I get a few caps for these? Hmm. Sure. Closer inspection. These are loafers. <laughs> <laughs> I would like your loafers. Hmm. I'll take him off your hand for eight caps. Uh, not, it's like, uh, not great, but it's like, yeah, I'll go for that. I'm just so very low on caps these days. I need a little bit back. He will slide you your caps and he will take the gloves and the loafers and he will place them into a specific clothing bag on his uh, pack Brahmin. Uh, he'll then continue to rummage around and he'll pull out a bottle of whiskey. That's what I thought. Wow, that literally sounded like a computer, like a really old computer just like 
really about to give it up. <laughs> or a very excited teacup pig. That's it. Shoot. <laughs> very excited. Shoot, dang, Bo, why'd you pull that out? Teacup. This, well, I don't exactly remember when I picked this up, actually. And it's but it's yours radiated. if you want it. How much? And I don't think it's irradiated. Mm -hmm. Looks at her cap, being like, oh, I really shouldn't. She does wait to see see what it's going to cost, though. Uh, five caps. I got gotcha. you. She's like, what? Aw. Yeah, he... Uh, if, if you decide to pay for it, then uh, he hands you this triple distil triple distilled bottle of whiskey. Why is yeah. such good whiskey only five caps? Because we oh. live in a hellscape. Don't question it. Jesus, yeah, I would not. The man's in a good mood. <laughs> what else I got in here? Uh. I've got a couple of bundles of scrap metal as well. Never have enough scrap metal. What price tag are you thinking on them? Hmm. Let's call that a cap each again. All right. How many piles of scrap you got? I got two. All right. That's two for me, Chief. Here you are. Mm -hmm. He hands you uh, just uh, loose cogs and small metal pipes. Thin sheets of metal that are in bundles. Fancy. Uh, I've got some bubble gum. I already have gum. Ha. <laughs> 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 it sounded so sad. Like it was a, like it's some kind of complicated. Jokes on you, chump. She's like, I have bubble yubble. Ugh, shit. Continue. <laughs> Been a day. <laughs> I got me that hubba bubba. Bubble gum, anyone? Complete with pirate tattoo. How much? I knew. <laughs> oh, even my of, course, of course, you would. The tattoo, something. Oh, you threw in the tat. You had to do the tattoo. Two caps. You didn't say it was Bazooka Joe. Anyway, Bazooka Joe. <laughs> you anyway, no, was that Bazooka Joe? Bazooka Joe. Bubba Gump. <laughs> I like bubble tea. Me too. Yes, I'll eat half of this in one sitting and just be like, like barely able to speak because there's so much fucking gum in my mouth. <laughs> oh, I've absolutely put an entire one in my mouth before. Oh yeah, that was a that, just to that prove was a, it to myself. That was a test of fortitude in the schoolyard. That's how you knew you could blow the big bubbles. You take that whole bag of big league chew and you just dump it in your mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Loses its flavor in seconds. Darn I like the grape. Tootin'. I like the grape flavor better than the bubble gum. Flavor. At least it's not Everybody fruit else. stripe. Fruit stripe, I don't even know they flavor the damn things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that oh they do. Good. It's fruit, just fruit... gone before you realize it's there. Fruit Apex... stri... <laughs> like fruit stripe is the LaCroix of gum. Is, is Apex going to immediately <laughs> try oh to God. put this tattoo on? Oh, I'm licking the tattoo and rubbing it on my arm right now. <laughs> I'm surprised you know how it works. I read the instructions. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's, it's a like picture. Make wet. It, it is a, a cartoonish looking anchor. It's like make wet, put on skin, done. No. Now Apex has anchor art. Yeah, but it's a child size tattoo, so it's like a, like a quarter inch anchor on my like forty inch bicep. <laughs> brother, you have to, you have, you <laughs> my have pythons, to. brother. My pythons, brother. Look at these pythons. Uh, I've got some 
water here, but it's not exactly clear. And he, sir, and he holds up two bottles of dirty water. Can I can't you? think of anything I'd be able to use that for. Other than Can drinking? Boil? Well, other than drinking, yeah, of course. So I was it's just, not... I'm... Sorry, go ahead. I just hold up the scrap metal. I'm like, I'm thinking about projects right now. Actually, Connor, I have stupid, a very stupid question. Uh-huh. So... God, I'm going to regret this. Can you boil the radiation out of water? No. Okay. No. No. Can you in Fallout? No. They had to... God, no. That was the entirety of what Fallout 3 was about. Yep. Is, is making purified water. I don't know how radiation works. It's okay. Stuck. I leave. don't think... Uh, it's not very common knowledge. Can uh, you like, yeah, it's like you have to go to school for it or something. Can you boil the radiation out of water? Hi, Vsauce, Michael here. And he just rises out of the earth. Wasn't that also the plot of Fallout 1? Well, yes, but technically no. <laughs> we only speak of the ones that people played. Ow. Damn. <laughs> My Fifi. <laughs> I played him. Anyway. I played him too. Any takers? Uh, no, I'm good on water right now, but thanks for the offer. All right. Yeah, me too. Same. Oh, no, those are mine. Um, last thing is I got some Magnum rounds. Let me take a look. I was gonna look over to Cynthia. You got one then? I just expected Cynthia to just be like, "How much?" I just, I don't think we have a Magnum I mean, gun yet. Yeah, but the last time we had Magnum rounds, oh, she didn't have it then. I was really thinking of them. Mag Caster. Ah, oh, no, those me. those eat scrap metal. You wanted them yeah. last time anyway, though. Even though I mean, technically, you could put them in there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, I'm okay. I mean, just I mean, you're right. The slag. It all goes somewhere. Okay. I'm yeah, sure shoving. Like... I'm sure shoving an explosive into a superheated chamber will result in uh, fun Good times thing. for everyone. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's a gun like that. You pull the trigger and you threw it. <laughs> Get you not. That is a weapon in a game I played. <laughs> what, Borderlands? Wow. Maybe. Okay, there was Probably. a gun like that in Borderlands, but no, it was an old that's, 90 that's, shooter. That's, I that's, how, that's how Borderlands, like, re I, I think it's the, uh, one one of the companies specifically, that's how you read it. The gun. The Tor gun does that. You throw it, it becomes a grenade. Uh, no, no, no. It's like the Malawan that blows up. Torg, just all, like, everything about Torg guns explode. <laughs> I have one question for you. Explosions? <laughs> yes, Mr. Torg. Bo will sort of rattle the box around in his hands, looking expectantly between all of you, and then he'll slowly start to put it away. He didn't have any... I don't think he had any shotgun shells, right? No, he did not. Okay, yeah, then. Yeah, no, I'm good, man. Can't think of anything else. I was thinking, would it be possible to make a pipe gun that shot a magnum round, but then I'm like, no, the force would explode the pipe, so. Uh, I mean. But this is fallout we're talking about. You can try. Theoretically, all guns are pipe guns. I, you can do whatever I do you not want. have the time to talk about theoretics right now. <laughs> I am acting. <laughs> what is this, the first half of the episode? <laughs> Ow, my leg. <laughs> How much you selling them uh, Magnum rounds for, Bo? Mmm, Magnum rounds. Let me think. Mm. 
this will be three caps each, and I've got six of them. I'll take half of those off your hand. All right. Nine caps, then. All right, here you are. And he hands you uh, a couple boxes of high velocity 44 caliber rounds. Hot damn. All righty. Yeah, I'm assuming that's everything. Yeah. No, you give me enough fun products to work with, so thank you very much, Bo. Mmm. Uh, well, I should probably do the nice thing and take these plates back in for Brenda. Y'all good? I was looking at the party. Y'all y'all done eating? Zidia smiles. And nods. <laughs> I have a half look, like just a half smile. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Just like last time, Apex keeps the uh, bone of his steak. All right, I'll take. It became all a very useful shiv now. last time. Mm -hmm. Holy mother, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Right. As you you take in the plates, Alvin and uh, Bo will look between all of you as he sort of uh, prepares his pack Brahmin for another outing. I pet the Brahmin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. You know. You never did say why you were looking for this super mutant. I point at Johan. Johan looks up. He's one of my people. I've never seen another one of my people. I wish to know what we are like. Bo will nod. Yeah, I suppose he would. Well, suppose I won't pry, but well, anyway, <sighs> I'm heading up north. If y'all just came from the road that leads by the arena, at least I think that's what you said. Mm hmm. Hmm. Y'all think it might be worth taking another look around? They seem to be. They're under new management. Probably might be willing to trade. New management? Old management's dead. Well, <laughs> he <laughs> gives, you, gives you a look that's like, I knew that. <laughs> Who is this new manager? I look to Alvin. Alvin knows him better than I do. They just call him boss as far as I know. Big son of a gun. But he seems but he seems am cool to business. Hmm. He had a really kind look about him despite that size of it. And you're trying to make it seem like you don't know him? Mm-hmm. Okay. That'll be a charm roll. Oh no. Right. Oh no, I got a point in charm. Sixteen. 
Seven. Ooh, thank goodness. <laughs> he he cocks his head and he, he looks at you. He he it seems a, a little bit. Uh, he seems to look through you a little bit, but um, he doesn't quite exactly realize what that means. Um, so he nods. Okay, well, if y'all vouch for him, then I suppose if they're looking for supplies, then I might as well be looking to sell. Well, I'm going to be heading there, and then I'll probably go further north up towards Riverside, and from there, who knows? You know, maybe the ghouls at the airport will want some supplies. Probably, well, the arena probably also has stuff for you to restock up on as well. Hmm. There are fewer people using fewer things now. Well, that's good to know. All right, well, if there's nothing else, I suppose I'll leave you to it. Safe travels, Bo. You too, hard. Be, be seeing you, runaways. And company. See you around. I pet and, the Brahmin goodbye. <laughs> the uh, the Brahmin uh, makes a pleased noise as you pet it and uh, trundles forward slowly as <sighs> Bo, Hunter, uh, and the pack Brahmin move up north. Alvin, uh, Brenda thanks you for returning the plates, obviously, and she smiles. If there's anything y'all ever need, we'll be right here for you. Oh, I appreciate that, Brenda. We'll be hitting the trail now, but give me just one second. I'm just trying to recall a name. You and Scott, you and Scott take good care now. Oh, we will. Thank you so much. Don't no, die. No, no, no. I try not to every time I wake up, ma'am. We we all do eventually. Okay, Mr. Nihilus, let's get hit in the road. <laughs> wow. The eggs were fluffy. <laughs> Thank you for them. Oh, uh, sure thing, big guy. And with full bellies and the sun beginning its descent as it officially passes over into afternoon, you hit the trail once more. Oh, Louise. Oh, yeah. Here, got this for you. I hand, the, I hand the bottle of whiskey. Well, he sort of does it. You know that look when like someone like sort of like does the upside down frat of smile because they're so faclent? Yes. Just like, Alton Bronson, you are a fucking ray of sunshine in my life. <laughs> well, that's a, well, that's one of the nicest compliments I could possibly get out here. I... I figured seeing that jumpsuit made you feel a certain kind of ways, so. though. Uh, scratches the back of her head. You know, Barry always just kind of gets a stick in my fucking craw. Just the mention of him. Well, don't worry. That Solomon feller probably lives in Westport, so. Yeah. He ain't leaving there anytime soon. So it that might... venue's always gonna be open. Might be something. I mean, I'm more also hoping if it sounds like family members are holing up in there, maybe Barry's one of them, and that'll save me another trip. Ugh. Looks at the sky and just exhales really hard. Yeah, Lord knows I've made that sound once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I do it all lady-like. I don't fucking know. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> We did right. leave that job in Westport half-finished. 
Yeah. Ugh, That's poor... Uh, what was the name of the DJ again? Toby? Uh, Toby, Toby Blunt, yes. Ugh, poor Toby. Hope the commendations are at least not horrible. <laughs> Hate to think of him just languishing in some, you know, classic prison cell type thing with, like, no water and a toilet bowl in a bucket. That sounds like most places here. I'm trying to think positive, though, here. Come on. Fair. There might be one window. Well, after we find Kirk and Pepper, maybe we can go back to Westport and check in on Toby. Yeah, the prison yeah. they threw us into in Frontenac didn't even have a bucket. True. Uh, that is also true. I think that was more of a Holden I don't know. Yeah, first things first. Exactly. And Apex is right. Job was half done, but honestly, what could we do? Heat was on. There's resistance there waiting. Yeah, I remember you telling me. Hope they're doing okay, too. You start making a list of all the promises we've been making to people. <laughs> yeah, a lot of checks. Make sure none of them bounce. We are very helpful runaways, we are. I ought to make you a side quest list. I have one. <laughs> the list of the notes I wrote, I have to go ahead and revise them because they start looking like an episode of Hoarders. Of course, I write them all in, like, Apex's point of view. For example, for example, the top of we go people that want us to look for their daughter, I just wrote down, probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, find him Palmer. That's a that's a big thing too. That is so cool. yeah. Well, we were there. Didn't sign any sad nothing. Well, we'll keep an eye out for. Mm-hmm. Man, now you made me remember the hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> Praise be unto thee. <laughs> yep. the hole in one but yes we continue forward mm -hmm. until it gets too late and we have to set up a place to sleep indeed you do continue south <laughs> yay another square Square, okay. square, 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 square. Mm. Ugh, the rolling is so tense. <laughs> Tee -hee. Uh, as you move closer and closer to your destination, uh, you all start to hear various, just just a little bit of like a, uh, hmm, what would this even sound like? Uh. You hear the sound of of grunting and and shuffling and wheezy breath, as the familiar sound of a pack of feral ghouls catches your ears. Uh, I hunker down. Uh, like what 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 is our surroundings right now? Are we still on a road with like a bunch of abandoned cars? Your surroundings right now would be uh, let me grab um if you're if you're following the road, you would be um sort of overlooking an overpass. Um, are the ghouls above us or beneath, or are we, they're, the they're sort of, 
they're uh, they seem to be huddled in between uh, uh, a series of piled up cars that are further down the road that you are currently on on the overpass. Uh, pretty much directly in your way, but um, how many? Uh, by your count, as you take a moment to gauge the heads, you can see there appears to be about eight, and one of them looks to uh, have some remnants of, like, leather armor on him. Any of them glowing? No, none of them glowing. Eight ferals ahead. Well, one of them hands. is one of them is dressed in old garb. An old garb. Non feral? Hard to tell. Mm. Uh <clears throat> I, I I kind of like hold my hand up. I'll take a closer look. And to kind of get a better inspection, I'm gonna try to like sneak forward and see if any of them are showing signs of intelligence. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me a wits. That's an eight. An eight. You shuffle forward, and as you get closer, you can see now that all of them sort of have a... Um, they have a a sense of similarity they all appear to be relatively mindless and just shuffling about looking for their next meal or any sign of activity that isn't from one of them and uh you you get close and from one of the you assume from one of the cars you your foot accidentally lands on a broken pane of glass and it just the briefest, faintest and the rest of you see all the ghouls immediately become active as they I seem to hear like something. Duck, I immediately duck down behind this uh, car that I'm sitting behind as I hear them start to shuffle and turn. Yeah, the, the sound picks up and then the rest of you begin to hear the <sighs> I start to listen for their shuffling footsteps. Uh, if they get close and they get within range, you know, bitey range, I'll start acting. Hmm. What do the rest of you do as uh, Apex sort of hunkers down and... and tries to maximize his hiding spaces uh, cover. Is there anywhere close to them where I can make a sound close to them for them to get away from Apex? Like if I could throw like a rock through a window or something like that? Uh, you could. Um... Yeah, if you if you want to if you want to try and throw a rock at one of the cars to direct them away from Apex's location, I'd say that would be just a body roll. That's an eight. Woo. Okay. Yeah, you pick up a a not a huge rock, but uh, one that fits into your palm easily, one that you could throw. Uh, quite effectively, and it pings off the metal side of one of these uh, trucks, and a couple of the ferals sort of turn their attention over. They, they stop moving for a moment, and they all redirect their attention towards the noise, and some of them begin to shuffle over towards that direction. How many of them does it sound like are still coming towards my direction? Um, none of them... Are are continuing to approach you, but they they haven't left your general vicinity yet. 
Uh, but it looks, it, it seems like about half of them have gone to investigate the new noise. <laughs> and it still doesn't sound like any of them are like calling out any orders or anything like that. So they're all feral. To your, to your, um, yeah, it seems like they're all feral. If I peer around the side of this car I'm hiding behind, can I see, like, just kind of, at a glance, what I'm, what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on grabbing, like, a pebble or a rock and just throwing it at the back of the head with, of the one that's dressed differently. Just to see if it reacts differently than a feral would. Um. Yeah, that would be, uh. Hmm. I'm not trying to do damage, but. Yes, so this would be a wits roll, I think. Alright. Ah, that's a nine this time, so probably still giving away my position a bit, but I'm succeeding. Yes, you. Uh, I you you in that. take a small pebble and you um, you wing this uh, leather-clad ghoul in the back of the head, and it actually you 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 hit it hard enough that it sort of like stumbles a little bit. You don't. A little, a small little trickle of blood coming down where where the uh, pebble impacted. It doesn't appear to have hurt it, hurt it, but you've definitely irritated it as it looks over in the direction that it was hit from. And <sighs> okay, feral. Okay, all ferals. If and they it begins... if, they, if they if they attack, I okay. If that one gets in range, I'm just gonna try to rip it apart, but. Oh my yeah. god! It begins walking. It begins walking in your in the direction where it it uh, uh, it sustained the injury from. Apex just has a number in his head: eight, 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 eight. <laughs> just like just like okay, who's the asshole? Mm -mm. The rest of you see uh, Apex. Uh, wing a rock at the back of the leather-clad feral. All right. Apex is then, like, kind of closing his eyes and he's slowly gripping the hand that he has in the Death Claw gauntlet as he listens for it to approach. I think it's... All right. I think we might have to get our hands dirty. Maybe not. He might just be trying to figure out if any of them are friendly or not. Well, let's just wait for his move. I'll slot my hands into my power fists. I'm Let's gonna see. get out. No, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Everybody <clears throat> else go ahead and do your prepping thing. I'm just... I think I'll switch to my SMG for this fight. Cynthia has her rifle ready, just in case, but she does check in with Johan as well. Are we getting ready for a fight? Yeah, it might get messy, Johan. Mm. Mm. I will do what I must. All right. Apex just sits around the back of the car, listening as its feet shuffle uh, forward. As soon as its feet start getting closer, he's going to look to the side of the car, and as soon as its body crests around the edge, I'm going to reach up, try to, like, claw it by the face and drag it down before it can make a sound that alerts too many of the others. All right. It eventually does... Uh, uh, not shamble, but it sort of has a, a 
feral like stalk to its uh to its gait as it um a, a lot like a lot like the way you stalk a prey apex actually as it has this sort of animalistic quality it stalks around the corner and go ahead and roll your body Oh no, seven, I'm taking some damage here, but I reach up, I grab it, and I just kind of, like, pull it down with me. Like, I, I, I guess I'm trying to go for, like, a wraparound chokehold at this point. It's probably going to bite me on the arm as I drag it back down to my position and try to, like, break its neck from down here. Yeah, it's, um, you... You grab it and you take it down to the floor and its face smashes against the floor... And it, it groans. And you try and wrench and uh you try and wrench and try to break its neck in one fell swoop. But as as you do, it stands up and shoves you hard against the car. Oh, that one's stronger than I thought. You take two damage as your grip is released from it, and it growls and roars in your face. <laughs> as you have angered the feral ghoul reaver and ah, that, that is where we will end tonight's session a reaver Woo! i have found the i found the feral boss oh boy a oh, feral no. ghoul reaver is a stronger version of a feral does he have red text over his head <laughs> he, <normally laughs> he doesn't have a skull next to his level so you oh, don't know okay. you never know either way that's where we're gonna end tonight's session and we'll get back to this in oh. two weeks. Yeah, Woo. baby. Woo. That's right. <laughs> just like, oh no. Anyway, <laughs> poor Apex. Just like, oh no. Well, time to shooty. Oh good, a worthy opponent. I, I, again, I, I I know I uh, have never really asked for a, a day off or anything like that, but a thank you so much for letting me. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like, Life is life, man. Go to go to the place and tell me how those burgers are. Shit happens. I'm not gonna be like, no, you have to play my funny game. <laughs> God, it's <laughs> funny game. I didn't think I I, I didn't think I, I didn't think it would be a problem, but like I was just like I I come in just like oh from you didn't work and think whatnot. that did you exactly exactly <laughs> don't you don't you do that. Don't <laughs> you don't think? Oh, don't you do oh, it? No. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! You're Let right. Do I don't think. I don't think <laughs> ever. No. There, there are some times when I do my shows and I'm like just in the zone of grinding, and just like I don't think my brain is just like a, and I have to like physically pull myself back into consciousness, going, "Thank you for the hundred." <laughs> <laughs> no thoughts, no sad. No uh, sadness can't catch me if I have no neurons. Sad thoughts, sad thoughts can't keep up with me. So yes. Light off my smooth, smooth brain. Next, uh, next session we'll be picking up with combat. Uh, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and, and do our outros. Caitlin, where can they find you, and what are you up to? You can find me all over the internet at Boobs McBalrog. Here on Twitch is twitch.tv slash Boobs McBalrog with zeros instead of O's. I don't know if I'm going to be streaming this week. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of a crazy time. But uh, I will be over at twitch.tv slash Lanny at 3 p.m. on uh, Monday. Yes. For some more Ties That Bind. Woohoo! Play Nara, and that's it for me. Right on. We've got Lanny. Where can they find you, and what are you up to? You can find me all over the internet at Lanny Pator. I'll probably be playing some Street Fighter VI tomorrow uh, with my boy Gulak Crunch as we're heading towards uh, what I assume to be kind of the end of the campaign ish sort of thing. Uh. And, of course, on Monday, 5 o'clock Central Time, you can join myself, Caitlin, Connor, Shadow Dancer Bob, and Takahata101 for the Ties That Bind. Uh, there was a, a lovely party that everybody had. Everybody had a good time, except a few kids and their parents. But you know what? They'll deal. 
Uh, mm. I mean, whatever, you know, right? Uh, now it's time to wrap things up with the party and say goodbye to our lovely visiting dignitaries as we look forward to trying to prevent a war, hopefully. I don't know. This, this Tensions are high. Tune in. See how they pan out. That's me. Right on. We've got Rabbit. We're going to find you. What are you up to? Hey, what's going on? My name's Rabbit. I'm a uh, comedian and also a writer. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube at Hey Mr. Rabbit. I stream throughout the week. I stream horror games, RPGs, and retro games. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, uh, please come on down and uh, hop in, as they like to say. And uh, let me uh, let me let me tell you some of my dumb dumb stories. I play all kinds of games like uh, RuneScape, uh, V Rising. Uh, Etrian Odyssey, the game I've always wanted to stream, but I didn't know how to get it from my 3DS to you, uh, is now on Steam, and I got all those. Uh, so I'll probably be doing that soon, and showing you just how absolutely, uh, absolutely difficult Etrian Odyssey is, but it's really fun, and the music's really gorgeous. So yeah, hey Mr. Rabbit, that's me. Right on. We've got Sarah. Where can they find you, and what are you up to? I'm on Twitter, it's there with an H and with an E, will ya? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Be a quiet week, we'll take a break so Rabbit can go do the stuff he needs to do, and uh, we'll just get back to the stuffs next week, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> and jury duty. Jury <laughs> <laughs> duty. That's me. Right on. Uh, and then we've got me. They can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, most recently been playing through Yakuza Like a Dragon and also Deus Ex Invisible War. Uh, that's going to be happening tomorrow, so be sure to check that out. Uh, we just found out that there's this really creepy dude that is planning to uh, kill children. So, that's a thing. <laughs> what is this? Okay. Yeah. Also, said yeah. children found out about this, and so they are literally hiding in the walls, smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. They're smoking with cigarettes? They are smoking. And alcohols? That's right. How dare they? It's my alcohol. Little little delinquents. Yeah, give me that. That's daddy's booze. Uh, but yes, um, that's pretty much all that I've got. This episode was brought to you in part by Die Hard Eyes. Die Hard Dice. That's right. Die Hard Dice. Is your one stop shop for dice and dice accessories. And if you head on over to dieharddice.com, you can use the code UNEXPECTABLES to save 10% on your order. You can also use that code to purchase the Lies Aspect Dice, uh, oh, the you. official collaboration between the Unexpectables and Die Hard Dice. Uh, also, check out our store. We got some new designs coming down the pipeline soon. You'll be hearing about that within the next couple of weeks or so, hopefully. But yes. Um, we also couldn't be here every week, or almost every week, without all the wonderful business subs that are donated from the chat. Business sure. Business subs from people such as IDC Witch. Thank you for the four months. Let's go to the beach. Hmm. Radioactive beach with radioactive sharks. Ooh, rad sharks. Uh, IDC Witch, thank you for the 99 bits. Gets irradiated. Hell yeah. Probably not a mayor. Thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Dugga. Aeon Pro Tech Gaming, thank you for the raid with a party of 30. How's it going, Mark? Hope your uh, Star Wars uh, game went well. They were playing a Star Wars TTRPG. Subarian, thank you for the uh, eight months. Cheshire Stray, thank you for the four months. 
Sammy Grayson, thank you for the raid. And finally, Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 100 bits. All right, well, we probably ought to find somebody to raid. Oh my god. Where's oh my goodness. Uh, we got oh boy, Bracky, we got Bracky on doing some art. That is true. Oh wow. Yeah, we have Bracky. Tabby's doing Street Fighter CX. Hmm. And let's go ahead and raid Bracky. He's got 18 viewers right now. So let's go ahead and give him some love. He's drawing some boobies, probably. Uh, but they're usually on. He is the version. royal buttsmith. If he were here, he would probably say something like, "Por qué no los dos." It's true. Uh, ah, the boo butts. Mm. Buttsmith. What, what is our raid message going to be? I mean, Apex's line, I don't know, was pretty powerful. That'd also be a funny raid message. Just raid know. in, I don't know. I don't know. What about not all mutants? Not all mutants. Aww. <laughs> yeah, I like it. That one's fun. Not all mutants. That'll be our raid message. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Yeah. See you soon. Have a goodbye, everybody. Have a singular goodbye. Have one bye. <laughs>